Morning Christ Baptist. Today is June 11th, 2023, and here are your morning announcements. Happy birthday and happy anniversary to all of us who are celebrating in the month of June. June is also CBC Senior Saints Month. The upcoming activities will include the continuation of strength training and chair exercise on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 to 10 a.m. Crime prevention is on Tuesday, June 20th at 10 a.m. And staycation vacation is on Friday, June 30th at 11 a.m. If interested and want to participate, please sign up with the church office. Say the date. In roughly a month from now, CBC will have Vacation Bible School from Monday, July 10th to Friday, July 14th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. nightly. You can sign up online. JAM presents the Kids and Teens Cooking Class on Friday, June 23rd at 6 p.m. Registration is required. If interested, please see Sister Glenda Francis for more information. Calling all graduates and special award students, CBC would like to honor you at our graduation service on June 25th. You must register. The application is on CBC's website. Deadline is June 17th. No exceptions. See Sister Glenda Francis for further details. Reminder to all auxiliaries and groups, when planning events that will take place at the church, you must complete a ministry activity form. Once your form is approved, your event will be placed on the church calendar. Join us for Fuel for Courage Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. on Zoom. You can also join us Tuesday evenings for Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. in person or on Zoom and YouTube. For those interested in volunteering for our feeding ministry, volunteers are asked to pick a date, Mondays, Thursdays, or Saturdays from 12 to 2 p.m. If interested, please contact Sister Joyce Paul or the church office. Connect with us. For those who are attending in person, ask an usher for a connect card. We want to connect with you. Also, you can connect with us through Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Well, that's all for our announcements for today. It's time to worship. Praise God. Thank you for your patience with me. Thank you, God, that when I thought I was all that, you had to show me that I must learn how to wait on you. You had to show me that I must equip myself for the battles, for the journey. You showed me it's not by what I do, but why, by what you do. And when I stop looking back and keep looking forward and looking up, God, you're able to do miraculous things. I thank you, Lord. Now, Father, as I stand to proclaim your word, I seek fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit. Speak to me and speak through me. Spirit of the living God, fall new and fall fresh. And we ask this in the master's mighty and marvelous name of your son, Jesus the Christ. We thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Give God praise this morning. Amen. Very mindful to thank God for the worship ministry and all that it, it goes into. The 
worship. Thank God for uh, on drums today. We have uh, Brother Carvel on drums. Lord, praise. Amen. Amen. We praise the Lord for uh, Brother Larry and encouraging other young men to come along. And there's some more of you out there with gifts that you need to give to the Lord. Come on, share it. We look forward to seeing what God can do in, with, and through you. We invite you to turn with us to the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11. I want to feel, thank the Lord also this morning for Brother De Niro doing double duty. Amen. But Mario's in California, and so Brother De Niro figured out some way to move the board up on his keyboard. And uh, he can operate the board and that, so thank the Lord for that. Amen. While you turn to Mark 11, I want some of you to go back just for a moment in your educational history. I want you to remember when you had to write your research paper for your master's or your Ph.D. Um, there's something in the writing called the research hypothesis. In the research hypothesis, you have to show the relationship between the hypothesis and what you think the outcome is going to be. Also, you must make it simple and concise and avoid all wordiness. The third thing you must do is make sure that there's no ambiguity or assumptions about what you're going to write that is filtered its way into your hypothesis question. Or third, fourthly, you must show that there is measurable, there is some observable and testable results from what you are studying or going to delve into researching. And finally, there must be some relevance and specificity that's attached to the thing that you're studying and the outcome that you're looking for. Simply stated, a hypothesis question includes a predicted and or expected result from whatever research you're entering into. Now, that's an important concept because when, you, when we look at our lesson today, we deal, here's what we're dealing with. We deal with, in our, all of our studies, we deal with a thesis and we deal with a hypothesis or hypothesis. And there may, in fact, be an antithesis or antithesis. Whenever we're studying, there's a thesis, there's a hypothesis, there's an ant antithesis of what we are looking at when we're studying. And many times those things are influenced, listen, not by what we are researching, but by our own feelings, by our own thoughts. Let me say it differently. There's some of us can look at a fact and argue with the fact that the fact is not what it's saying. Mark chapter 11, are you there? Verse number 22, 1122. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For shortly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he asks. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. I'll talk this morning from the theme, the thought, help wanted, mountain movers needed. Help wanted, mountain movers needed. This, this, this lesson today is the sequel to last week's lesson, or you could say that last week's was the prequel to this week's lesson. But the sequel to last week's lesson is there was a man who had a son that was sick. He had a problem. They said it was epilepsy, but Jesus showed differently. The man brought his boy to the disciples of Jesus. Y'all remember this? Brought his boy to the disciples of Jesus, but Jesus, who was not there, had to hear when he came back that his disciples could not heal the boy. Jesus, the Bible, if you remember last week, Jesus immediately did not speak to the boy. He spoke to the demons in the boy, and he told the demons to come out. Are we all together now? Following Jesus calling the demons out, the Bible says that when they got private, Matthew 17, 19, 21, the disciples asked in a private query, why couldn't we cast it out? Now just pause for a moment. That means that they did try to cast it out. 
Y'all with me? They tried, but they were not able. And so they said to Jesus privately, there's some things you have to deal with publicly, and then there's some things you have to deal with privately. Privately, they says, why could we not cast it out? That was followed by a poignant and, and instant rejoinder from Jesus because of your unbelief. I like Jesus. Jesus. Jesus don't have time to play around with us. He don't have time to try and butter us up. Jesus says, because of un your unbelief. In fact, what he said to them immediately is, your faith is not even as large as the infinitesimal small mustard seed. For if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you'd have been able to do something about it. Are y'all with me this morning? So then he says, he, then he says, have faith in God, which literally in the construction of the Greek is have the faith of God. Have faith in God. Have the faith of God. Have strong faith. Have confident faith. Believe that when you're talking to God, God is hearing you and that you are saying, let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Talk to God about it and believe. So the question, the question, the questions last week, first question, why wasn't my boy healed? Here's what I love about this story is that Jesus did not just deal with the symptoms. The symptoms were he threw himself into the fire. The symptoms were he threw himself into the water. Those are just symptoms. The problem was there was demons causing him to do those things. Can I suggest something to you today? Many times we spend so much time on the symptoms, we don't get to the real problem. Yeah, you're cussing, but you're cussing because you don't have vocabulary. You're cussing because you can't control yourself. You're cussing because you've been cussing all your life and don't know nothing different. That's just a symptom. The problem is cussing comes out of you because there's no good stuff to come out of you. I didn't make that up. The Bible says it. How can good water come out of a dirty fountain? Did the Bible say that? So if cussing keeps, listen to what Jesus says. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. You have, out of the heart the mouth speaks. So whatever my mouth is saying, if it's a lie, I got a lying heart. If it's bitterness, I got a bitter heart. If it's defensiveness, I got a defensive heart. Because out of my heart, my mouth is going to speak. Jesus dealt with the, with the symptoms, not with the symptoms. Jesus says, let me get to the etiology. Let me get to the causation. Let me get to what is the problem here. There's demons in this boy. Why wasn't my boy healed? But then, second question, why couldn't we perform the same healing thing? Jesus then gives them the answer. This thing comes how? Two people on this side was here last week. The rest of y'all weren't even here. By fasting and prayer. Spending time before God. Getting energized. In the presence of God, Jesus says, this is how it happens. There are many of us who want things to happen, but we have not grasped how God works. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. We've got to start to understand that God works by his own power and not ours. This text is a very interesting text because as you start to study all around it, in the, this text is really uh, at the close, the close to what Jesus had preached in March, Mark 11 from verses 12 to 22. This is near the end of Jesus' life. It is a time in Mark of the triumphal entry. Jesus is coming to, come to the close of his life. And as he's coming to the close of his life, he recognized this is no time to fool around with folk. I got to tell them about their unbelief. I got to tell them about their problems. We got to get things right. Because we're coming to the end of our lives. So in the close, he's preaching. Verse 12 and 13 of Mark chapter 11 says, They left Bethany, the house of dates, 
right next door was Bethphage, which is the house of figs. They left Bethany, the Bible says, and Jesus was feeling a little hungry. Feeling a little hungry, he looked and he saw this tree, this leafy fig tree in the distance. So he walked up, and when he got to the fig tree, there was no figs there, just leaves. But then the text is quick to say, for it was not yet the season for bearing figs. There seems to be a conundrum here. He went to get figs from a tree, but it wasn't the season for bearing figs. So why did he go to the tree? Well, the text says that the leaves look so mature and look so flourishing that the tree ought to be producing something. Y'all with me yet? Let me say it differently. There's a lot of times it looks like we know Jesus. It looks like we have spirituality. But the reality is there is no fruit. We just dressed up looking like. The Bible says that when Jesus saw this tree, the proper fix season not happening, Jesus said something to the tree. Verse number 15, verse 15 of Mark 11. When they came into Jerusalem, he went into the temple. When he got to the temple, where he discovered was the righteousness that was required in God's house had been substituted with greed and thievery. And so he cleansed out the temple a second time. He did it at the very beginning of his ministry in the Gospel of John. Now he does it again. He cleans it out again. Because you see, this, the, those two lessons are important to get us getting to the mountains. First of all, the promising yet unproductive fig tree was emblematic of the spiritual barrenness that was in Israel. The nation should have been showing more than it was showing, but it was only a facade. It only looked like it on the outside, but they were not demonstrating it. This, this, this fig tree that they had ex impressive outward appearances, but it wasn't what God was looking for. And unproductive, barren hearts had permitted unrighteousness to enter into the house of God. Are y'all staying with me? Because the unbarrenness was in the nation, they had no problem with the deception and thievery that was going on out in the court. Because they were getting a cut. You know, I'm always, I'm always wary. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've spent a lot of years in, in the corporate life, and there's something called uh, forensic accounting. And, and I'm always wary when somebody gets upset about saving money. That, that always makes me scared. Um, I, there, there was a situation I, I saw in this particular church um, that there was, there was a, uh, someone had gotten a cost to repair the things on the back of the benches to put the book things in. And uh, the man was charging almost $3,000 to fix the things to put the books in. And somebody else came up with an idea, why don't we go down to the Votech and see if they'll do it as a project. And the Votech says, yeah, just, uh, just give us the money, put a cost for the wood, and it'll be done. And so $600 for the wood, $3,000 to the other guy. The man who brought the code for the $3,000, he got upset. It's not fair. Oh, it's not fair. We just saved $2,600. What? It's not fair. You always, forensically, I always start to suspect something when, when, when this question right. Here it is. An unproductive, barren heart will have no problem with irreligious activity going on in the house of God. Verse number 20, Mark chapter 11 says, On Tuesday, the tree that Jesus cursed on Monday had withered. Y'all following the story? Peter remembered what happened on Monday. And Jesus, he, Peter's wondering, why is the tree cursed? Why is it all withered? Jesus says, let the faith of God be in you. Now, wait a minute. That's not what I asked you, G. I asked you about the tree. Why did it wither up when it really is not the season for figs? Jesus says, let the faith of God be in you. You see, Jesus is always teaching lessons. He's always growing. He's always trying to advance. 
The disciples could not think why the tree would wither away so quickly. But here's what we need to understand. Anybody who rejects the power of Christ in their lives, you're going to wither. That's just natural because you're not attached to the vine. Verse 22, 23. So Jesus said, remember he told Peter, verse 20, have faith of God be in you. Verse 22, he said to them, have faith in God or have the faith of God. For shortly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes those things he says will be done. Whoever says to this mountain, be cast into sea. Now, they're in the mountains. The closest sea is the Sea of Galilee. It's not even nearby. But Jesus says, say to the mountain, be cast into the sea. I, want, I need some people in here today with an imagination. Can't you just see mountains skipping across the plains, making this way to the Sea of Galilee? He says, say to the mountain, be removed, and it will be removed, and it'll travel all the way to the sea. Can't you see mountains just, come on, I need some faithful people in the room today. Can't you just see mountains li li lifting up off the ground and flying through the sky toward the Sea of Galilee? He said, he said say, be removed. Say to this mountain, be removed, and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things will be done. Consider, if you will, just for a moment, discourses with mountains. Any of you ever talk to a mountain? Don't go, don't go to sleep on me, come on. Um, anybody here ever talk to a mountain? Anybody here? Everybody who made a mountain move, raise your hand. Well, we've got to understand what's going on in this text. Because I want to suggest to you that at this moment, we're not talking about physical mountains. But we're talking about mountains. Jesus is declaring that there's some things that if we believe that God can move it out the way and not doubt in our hearts, God will move them out the way. In fact, in fact, it's in the active voice. He says, and do not doubt. In the active voice means to discriminate, to distinguish, or to discern. If you say to the mountain and do not dis and discern what God can do. In, in the passive voice, it means to go to law or to dispute. If you say that God can do it and don't dispute, but here's the third understanding. The third understanding is to dispute with oneself. Anybody here ever argue with themselves? God says, Go. You say, no. God says, stop. You keep going. You are, you're disputing inside of yourself over a, an order that God has given for life. He says, if you do not doubt. Now, so the question is, how effective are you in transferring eminences? No matter what the mountain is, how effective are you in making mountains move? Because the boy was sick and they couldn't handle it. What we need to do miraculous things are some mount movers. We need some help. Christ Baptist needs some help. We need some mountain movers. I, I know you pray, but I, I, this ain't time for just, just a prayer. I need mount movers. Question then, he says, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed. Whoever says to this mountain, was he referring to the mountain on which they were standing? Oh, because if I'm standing on it and I tell it to move, I'm going to fall down. Or was he referring to a nearby mountain? Was he referring to some, something that when it moved, there would be a geological disruption when the mountain moved out the way? Or was he speaking about the mountain of barrenness and unfruitfulness that was in the nation? Or was he talking about mountains of faithlessness 
and unbelief, not trusting God. He's, he's speaking to us this morning. That when we believe that God cares for us, when we believe that God has our best thing in mind, if we doubt in any kind of way, that mountain will not move. And sometimes, sometimes, we make mountains out of molehills. Some things are not a really a mountain. You just need to step over it and keep on going. But no, mountains in the Bible has a very prominent place. Can I share it with you? The ark was placed on Mount Ararat. Sacrifice of Isaac was on Mount Moriah. The law was given on Mount Sinai. Caleb says, give me my mountain, which was a mountain of giants. The temple was built on Mount Zion. Elijah and the prophets of Baal fought on Mount Carmel. Jesus was tempted on the Mount of Temptation. The transfiguration happened on Mount Tabor. God does stuff on mountains. My problem is, we don't like mountains. Just saw a thing as I was studying this text this week. There's a man, I forget the country, started tunneling through this mountain. And it was, it took him over 20 years to tunnel all the way through. He started tunneling, but then when he got about a third of the way through, they built a road that went around the mountain. And even though they built the road that went around the mountain, he kept on tunneling. For 20 years, he tunneled and came out to the other side. You say, well, I commend him for his stick to itiveness. That's what you would say. I would say, stop digging and take the road that God has prepared and go around the mountain. The, the mountains are important. Exodus 19, 20. The Lord came down upon Mount Sinai. On the top of the mountain, the Lord called Moses up to the top. Get, get, watch this now. Follow the picture. God came down to the mount. He called Moses up to the mount. And there, Moses went up. Are y'all with me? Can I suggest something to you today? There's some mountains that have to be climbed. There are some mountains that have to be uh, 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 conquered. As Caleb says, give him a mountain. There's some mountains that have to be cordoned off. Because when Moses went up to Mount, Ta Ta uh, Mount Sinai, they cordoned off the mountain because everybody couldn't go up there. Oh, let me say that again. Everybody can't go up on the mountain where God is. But then Jesus says, some mountains, you just need to talk to them and command them. Mountain, I am sick of you. I got this condition called sick of this. And I'm sick of this problem. And I'm sick of this burden. And I'm sick of this situation that's impeding me to getting where God wants me to be. Jesus says, sometimes you've got to command. So even, even, even when the mountain is moved, even when the mountain is moved, recognize this, that it's not just the mountain that's going to be changed. When the mountains are moved, it's going to affect things in the valley. <laughs> Y'all didn't come to church today. Um, I'm in the valley and I'm traveling through life and I got this mountain in front of me and, and I'm, I'm looking at the awesomeness and, and how hard it is going to be to climb the mountain but soon as God moves the mountain out the way it's a level playing field now now we're all walking through the valley in the sun in fact the valley becomes the plain now because the mountains are not in my way. The fact that both Moses and Jesus was transfigured on a mount tells us something. So let's review real quickly. First of all, mountains speak to us of privilege. I thought they were a problem. I know you did. Mountains speak to privilege. God called Moses up to the mountain. That's a privilege. It's a privilege to be in the presence of God. God called him up. Sometimes, although they're difficult to conquer, 
There are privileged blessings that God gives to those who are willing to ascend to where he is. It's not an easy life. It's not an easy road, this mountain climbing business. But if you trust God, God will get you there. Mountains speak to us of privilege. But secondly, mountains speak of difficulty. They speak of obstructions. They, they, they speak of barriers. Understand this. Barriers are good to keep out the bad. But make sure your barriers are not keeping you locked inside. I'll do it again slow. Make sure your barriers are not keeping you locked inside where you can't even go anywhere. Barriers speak to difficult mountains, to difficulties. When you ask for a mountain, you're asking for a war. You're asking for a fight. Caleb, you see, God, give me this mountain. I know there's giants there, but I'm ready for the fight. I, I got any fighting people in the room today? Can I say this? When I'm talking about fighting people, I don't mean about fighting one another. I'm talking about fighting the enemy. Mountains speak of our God-given destiny. When you understand, when Caleb says, in fact, if you read Joshua 14, you'll find God had already told Caleb he could have the mountain. So then why did Caleb say, God, give me my mountain? God already said you can have it. Why is he asking for it? I'll tell you why. Because even though we know what God is doing, we got to keep on praying. We got to keep on believing. We got to keep on trusting, even though God has already said what he's going to do. So let me ask the question Do you have a holy desire for something in your life that you're waiting to be completed, but it has not happened? That's a mountain. Are you, are you at a place where you're waiting for that job? that you've been hoping to get, but you have not gotten yet, and you keep praying, that's a mountain. That man that you've been praying for, that woman that you've been praying for, that won't give you, forget the time of day, won't give you the time of the month. That's a mountain. It may be a good thing too now, don't, don't miss your blessing. Uh, do you have a big dream that you're hoping to come together, but the puzzles, the piece of, of the puzzle don't seem to fit, that's a mountain. And we've got to learn to say to the mountain, be thou removed. Mountain, I am sick of you. I'm not going to put up with this anymore. I am not going to climb you. I'm not going to tunnel through you. Get out my way, mountain. The Passion Translation of this text says, let the faith of God be in you. Jesus says, listen to the truth I speak. How many of you really believe Jesus when he says something? Listen to the truth I speak. Speak to obstacles and do not doubt that they hear you. That mountain heard you. Talk to that mountain. Say it like you got some uh, the, 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 a, few, a few days ago, a few days ago, um, Sister Bogan told her dog to uh, to get in the crate, and uh, he just stood there and looked at her. She said, "Samson, get in the crate," and he just stood there and looked at her. I walked in and said, "Get in that crate." He, he said, he said I, "I've dealt with him a couple times before." He he, 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 he kind of crazy. <laughs> I better go and get in this crate. Uh, can I say this to you? Even when the mountains are gone, it still takes faith to walk through the valley. No mountains. But you've gotten so conditioned with valley life that you don't know how to move even when the mountains are taken away. You're still back there. You're still looking back then and not looking when God is and where God's going to move you to. So even when the mountains are gone, it takes faith. So Isaiah, in our scripture reading this morning, one voice cried to another voice in our scripture reading. And, and, and as if, I come to celebrate and to comfort you, the voice says in Isaiah chapter 40. He says, first of all, you've got to prepare the way of the Lord. 
How many of us have put aside all the things that will prevent God from coming into our worlds, into our existence? You got to prepare things for God. Prepare you the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for my God. You've got to get stuff out of the way so that God can get through. Every valley, the text says, will be exalted. Now, y'all follow me. Y'all follow me. Mountain over here. I'm in the valley. But God says, yeah, speak to the mountain and tell it to be removed. Y'all with me? Speak to the mountain and tell it to be removed. But in case your mountain don't move and you trust me, watch me bring you up where the valley is exalted to the place where the mountain is, and now you're walking on mountaintops. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and every hill shall be brought low. Crooked places shall be made straight. Rough places shall be made smooth. Beloved, I'm coming to the end. There is no substitute for genuine, fervent prayer to God. There is no substitute. Whatever you want God to do, spend some time in prayer. Whatever you want from God, if it's giftedness, if it's position, if it's motivation, whatever you need, pray about it. There is no substitute for prayer. There's no shortcut for prayer. Y'all got to stop praying them little 10 second microwave prayers. Now, now, maybe a time that's all you got, you all, all you got time for now. I, I don't want you to misunderstand. Um, Peter, when he got out there on that water, he said, Lord, save me. He, he didn't have time for most holy and everlasting, thou one true and living God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Athaliah, Jeremiah. He didn't have time for that. He said, Lord, save me. But there are times when we need to spend some fervent, time in the face of God praying, laying on your face, praying to God about situations, circumstances and troubles. Those times are before us right now. There's no substitute. There's no shortcut. And there's no short changing in prayer. Because our God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask a thing. I've got so much to thank God for. So many wonderful blessings and so much more. A brand new mercy along each and every day. That's why I praise you. That's why I give you praise. For every mountain you brought me over. For every valley you brought me through. For every blessed, hallelujah. For this, I give you praise. For every mountain you brought me over. For every trial you see me through. For every blessed, Hallelujah. For this, I give you praise. Leon, for every mountain. He brought me over. For every trial. Every mountain. Every mountain.
give you. I give I, I give you. I give you praise. Calvary was an eminence that many of us now don't have to go over and go handle because Jesus already did. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. And he was victorious on Calvary. He said, Father, it is it's finished. It's, 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 it's done. And the victory that Christ won on Calvary is a victory that's available to every one of us who are in the family of God. Jesus died in order that the penalty for our sins was placed on him. Every failure of our lives was placed on the Christ. His head fell into the lock of his shoulders. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. The Bible says then he died. But on the third day he rose victorious with all power in his hand. We shout victory because of what he did. And so when I see mountains in front of me, and I consider every mountain that he's brought me over, every trial that he's brought me through, I give him praise for every mountain, for every mountain, brought me, brought me over, every trial, for every trial, you see me through, you see me through, oh, yeah. person here today you're not saved you're not born again you're not in the family of God mountains are still going to torment you but because of the power that God places in those who are his children he says we can speak to that mountain and have victory over it if you're here today and you're not saved, you're not born again, you're not in the family of God, come on and give your life to Christ. Today's the day, now's the time. Don't put off today for tomorrow. Is there one today? Is there another? God is speaking to you. God is saying something to you. God wants to help you with those mountains. He wants to give you power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You brought me.
is there another today not saved and God wants you saved died for everybody who will trust him is there one Maybe somebody here today, you already saved, you're born again, but you're not attached to any body, any church body. And we want to say, we want you here at Christ Baptist. We want you to join in with us and strengthen us and we'll strengthen you by letter or Christian experience. If you're in the room today, come on and cast your lots with us here at Christ Baptist. Hallelujah. another today we're waiting on you you're important to God and he's going to help you he's going to carry over these mountains whatever, whatever God is going to do with the mountain trust him not saved why don't you come already saved why don't you come believe in God today for his great miracle working power Thirdly, there may be somebody here today who you were a member of Christ Baptist Church years ago. Second Baptist, when it was downtown, but you're back in the area now. You're back, you're back available. Come on, come on home. We invite you to come today to renew your covenant with us. Is there one here today? Amen. First of all, we have Anna Dames who's coming today uh, for Christian experience. Let's give God praise. So Anna Dames. And Sister, Sister, Sister Dames, uh, you should have been here a long time ago. This is your home. You should have been here a long time ago. That's why I'm here now. <laughs> praise God. Welcome to Christ Baptist Church. Amen. We have this mother this mother brought her child because she feels that her child needs to have a church home. Amen. Miles. And, and I explained to her 
that what God does is he raises, he places us in families. And so Miles has been placed in a family for somebody who cares about him. So his mother's going to come to us also on Christian experience so she can get Miles ready for us. Amen. Amen. Now, Jerry McGill. McGill coming on Christian experience. Amen. This is... This, this is her daughter. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our brother Jerome came for prayer. And so we're going to be praying with him. But we're going to say to you, welcome to Christ Baptist Church. At the end of service today, the deacon and deaconess is going to take you in the rear. We're going to get some information from you. We're going to explain to you about the new member process as we get you processed. Can I also share with all of you, God did not send you here to do nothing. There's an assignment on every one of the lives here, including Miles. And, and, and let me tell you, what, one of the marvelous sounds that as a pastor I love to hear, listen to me, I love to hear babies cry. I love to hear them cry in church. You know why? That means there's some baby barren people in the church. So, so Miles is going to be raised up in a nurture and an admonition of the Lord in a body of believers that want to see him nurtured. Welcome to Christ Baptist. Amen. Brother Jerome, let us pray. Eternal God, in the name of your son Jesus, our brother came, Lord, because he said that there's some mountains in his life. This brother knows you, God. And so, God, what I'm asking you to do right now is take him into a time of prayer, take him into a time of fasting, where he'll have the power, God, to overcome. He has greater than mustard seed faith, God, that he can speak to that mountain and say, Mountain, be thou removed. And God, however you choose to deal with the mountain, whether you choose to implode it, to move it, to carry him over, God, we give him the victory through your power in the name of your son, Jesus. God, I'm praying for physical mountains to be moved. I'm praying for financial mountains to be moved. I'm praying for psychological mountains to be moved. Get them out the way. Because God, you deserve all of us. You deserve our every thought. Our hearts are on you. Bless him right now in the name of your son, Jesus. And God, we don't even know, need to know details. We need to know a God who knows details. Move right now by your spirit and your power. Let your word prevail in his heart. Whosoever believe and do not doubt in his heart, these things shall be done. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Rome. Come on, let's give God praise for these who have come today. God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that when your cry for help went out, you, the cry was for some mountain movers. And God, you're able to do an ex more than we could ever imagine you could do. There's some hearts that are crushed and need to be lifted up, God. Every low place shall be exalted. Now unto him was able to keep us from falling. To present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Both now and forever. People of God say amen. Amen. You see me through.